Hello everyone and welcome to ITLS Academy Empower the Youth. So today in this lecture we will going to study about a new topic of discussion that is fluorometry. So in this particular a chapter or you can say in this particular topic we will going to see what is actually fluorometry. We will going to cover the introduction part of fluorometry. We will see how the instrumentation part um, is there in fluorometry how the process of fluorometry occurs what are the advantages and disadvantages of fluorometry and at last we will see the applications of fluorometry so let's see the introduction part first so the introduction part of fluorometry says a large number of substances are unknown which can observe ultraviolet or visible light energy but these substances loses excess energy through heat through collision with the neighboring atoms or molecule however a number of essential substances are also known which lose only a part of this excess energy in the form of heat and release the remnant energy as electromagnetic radiation of a wavelength longer than what is observed the process of emitting radiation is collectively known as luminescence in luminescence light is produced at a very low temperature thus the light emitted by this process is regarded as light without heat or cold light so in simple word if i tell you the um, introduction of fluorometry so fluorometry it is a analytical method of detecting and measuring fluorescence in the compound that uses the uv light that uses the ultraviolet light stimulating the compounds okay so basically they are used to detect to measure the fluorescence in the compound okay with the help of ultraviolet light that stimulates the compounds and they cause them to emit the visible light so here the light or energy which is which are emitted by the substances they have a very longer wavelength as um, uh, then uh, what they have observed so this process of emitting the radiation with a longer wavelength than observed is known as luminescence so again in luminescence the light which is produced they are produced at a very low temperature okay the light which is produced it is produced at a very low temperature that is the reason it is also known as cold light so if in mcqs they can also ask you luminescence is also known as cold light okay so thus uh, in the light emitted by this process they are regarded as light without heat or cold light okay now let's move further and let's see what is the instrumentation okay so as we have already discussed that in luminescence two things we have already discussed what is luminous uh, in fluorometry two things we have uh, you have to keep uh, keep in mind that what is fluorometry okay now and again what is uh, the uh, what do you understand by luminescence okay so here again the luminescence they are basically of two types first is fluorescence and second is phosphorescence okay so let's understand the instrumentation and then we will going to move further okay so if you see this instrumentation it has a light source it has a lens then they have a filter that is known as excitation filter again they have a lens then they have a sample lens emission filter lens and detector so this instrumentation part we will going to discuss in detail and let's now let's see what is luminescence type so as already told you that luminescence is basically of two types first is fluorescence and third second is your phosphorescence 
so in uh, fluorescence <coughs> fluorescence it is a type of uh, uh, luminescence which are caused by a photon exciting a molecule means they are rising it an electronic uh, excited state so it is an optical phenomena in which the molecular absorption of energy in the form of photon what they do they trigger the emission of fluorescent photon with a longer wavelength okay so what do you understand by fluorescence so fluorescence it is a type of a luminescence when a beam of light is uh, incident on certain material okay so they emit the visible light or you can say they emit radiation so this phenomena is known as fluorescence and the substance showing this phenomena is known as fluorescent substances so the phenomena of fluorescence is a instantaneous and is start immediately after the absorption of light and stop as soon as the incident light is cut off so this is very important means the phenomena of fluorescence they are very they um, this phenomena is very instantaneous okay instantaneous means um, uh, that they start immediately after absorption of light and they get stop as soon as you uh, incident light is cut off okay now comes the phosphorens so <clears throat> in phosphorens phosphorens is uh, again another type of um, fluorescent uh, luminescence so in phosphorens it is a very specific type of pho uh, photoluminescence that is related to phos uh, fluorescence only so in fluorescence the phosphorent um, unlike um, the uh, fluores uh, fluorescence the phos uh, here the phosphorescent material does not immediately re-emit the radiation it absorbs. Means if you have seen this type, this paragraph as you can see here, this paragraph, the phenomena of fluorescence is very instantaneous and it starts immediately after the absorption of light as uh, and stop as soon as the incident light is cut off. Okay, this paragraph but in fluorescence actually it is um, a type of, or it is um, uh, the specific type, means it is somewhat related to fluorescence but in this um, the uh, phosphorescent uh, uh, phosphorescent material does not immediately uh, re-emit the radiation uh, uh, it uh, absorb the slower time scale the re-emission and uh, associated with the forbidden energy state transition in, in quantum mechanism. So as these transition occur very slowly in certain material absorbed radiation may be re-emitted at a lower intensity for, uh, for up to the several hour after the original excitation okay so uh, in phosphorens when the red, when the light radiation is incident on certain material okay when the radiation of light uh, um, whenever they are uh, incident on certain material so they continue to emit light even after the incident light is cut off so this type of delete phosphorus is a um, fluorescence is known as phosphorens and the substance are, are called phosphor, uh, phosphorescent substances. So the material exhibiting the fluorescence generally what they do they re-emit the excessive radiation within 10 to 6 or 10 to 4 seconds of absorption. On other hand material is exhibiting the fluorescence re-emit excess radiation within 10 to 4 or you can say 20 seconds or longer now comes the principle of fluorometry so what does the principle of fluorometry says so if you see the uh, principle of fluorometry so when the molecules are irradiated with the light of um, the appropriate frequency so it will observed 
in um, about uh, 10 to 15 seconds so in this process of absorption the molecule may move from the ground to the first uh, to the first excited singlet or uh, electronic state although at the room temperature molecule may be present in the ground vibration vibrational level so after absorption the excitation molecule end up in any one of vibrational level in the first excited electronic state so from these uh, from the excited singlet state one of the following three phenomena will probably occur depending upon the molecule involved in uh, involved and the condition so as we have seen the principle of fluorometry means um, whenever the molecules uh, when the molecules they are irradiated with a light means a light which have a very specific or appropriate frequency so the molecule it will observe the uh, uh, amount of light and um, for about 10 to 15 seconds so in this process of absorption means the uh, when the light is absorbed by the molecule the molecule they move from the ground to the first excited singlet electronic state means let's say the molecule is present and here if you can see if the molecule is present here in the ground state this is a ground state okay okay so the molecule after absorption of uh, the um, light of appropriate frequency the molecule from here from the ground they will move to the first excited singlet electronic state okay so although at a room temperature means when the um, uh, temperature uh, of the molecule uh, is at a room temperature so they are still present in their uh, ground vibrational level but after absorption the excited molecule can end up in any vibrational level in the first excited electronic state so they move to the first excited electronic state after only uh, the absorption of light but until uh, that they are just present in the ground state whether the temperature is room temperature okay at a room temperature now further moving to from the sing excited singlet state one of the three phenomena will probably occur depending upon the molecule involved in the condition means three phenomena is always there the first possibility is that the excited singlet state is relatively unstable in such situation the excited molecule will return to the ground state by collisional deactivation without emitting any radiation so what is the possibility so the first po possibility is means means how uh, from the excited uh, singlet state because of the three phenomena or three possibility the molecule can occur to, um, to its ground state first possibility is if the molecule uh, that the excited singlet state is relatively um, unstable so when the state is unstable so in such condition or situation the excited molecule will return to the ground state the first possibility is state will be unstable okay um, uh, by collision deactivation without emitting any radiation second possibility is that the molecule in the excited singlet state may emit an ultraviolet or visible light photon so this known as fluorescence and third possibility is that the molecule will uh, with a relatively you can say uh, stable excited state they may undergo a transition and sometimes thereafter it returns to the ground state usually by the emission of an ultraviolet or light um, uh, photon this is known as fluorescence emission okay so as we have understood that there are basically three possibility the first is when the excited sing a singlet excited state it is um, uh, you can say it is unstable so in that condition the excited molecule they will return back to their ground state second is uh, 
uh, when the molecule in the uh, excited singlet they emit an ultraviolet or, or visible light photon so this is the second and the third possibility is that molecule with uh, with a relatively stable excited state they may undergo a transition after uh, therefore they returns to the ground state so these are the three possibility uh, that um, uh, should uh, that will occur and the molecule excited molecule can return to the ground state so now comes the instrumentation of fluorometry as we have already discussed about the instrumentation so this is a systematic view of instrumentation we will going to understand each uh, instrument or um, each component uh, in detail let's get started and let's see the instrumentation view so the first is the ins the instrument used for the measurement of fluorescence are known as fluorimeter so what is fluorimeter so fluorimeters are those instrument that are basically used to measure the fluorescence so in these um, in these filter are used to isolate the wavelength of excitation so in these the filters they are used to isolate the wavelength of the excitation second is the fluorimeter is a manual instrument and it is best used for the measurement uh, at one or two wavelengths because change in filters is to be made each time the wavelength is changed that is the reason if you have seen in this particular diagram the two filters are used first is excitation and second is emission filter so whenever the wavelength of light get changed filter they also get changed okay the fluorimetry employ a mercury vapor lamp a condensing lens primarily filter sample container and secondary filter and receiving photocell generally the primarily filter is used to select the uv uv light but not the visible radiation in whereas in secondary filter it is used to transmit the visible fluorescent light so basically there are two filters as i have already told you uh, emission and uh, um, excitation filter so basically uh, the primarily filter that is there so they select the ultraviolet uh, ra radiation but not the visible one whereas if you see the secondary filter so they are used to transmit the visible fluorescent radiation and they absorb the incident ultraviolet radiation so the light from the mercury vapor lamp they are allowed to pass through the condensing lens followed by its passage through a primarily primary filter so the primary filter what they do they select the uv radiation as i have already told you but they are not but they do not absorb the visible radiation okay so in the uv radiation from the primary filter it is passed through the sample container and from the sample container the uv or the fluorescent radiation they obtain which they will pass through the secondary filter and they observe the uh, uh, primary irradiate um, radiant energy but they will transmit the fluorescent radiation okay so in this received by a photocells uh, placed in the position right at the angle to the incident beam so the output of the photocell they are measured uh, um, by a sensitive galvanometer or other any other devices now this is the whole systematic view of the instrumentation it have a light source uh, optical filter fluorescent sample optical filter then they have a photo detector 90 degree confer, uh, configuration helps separate the excitation from emission so this is how the working of fluorometry take place oh, sorry so if you see working of fluorometry excitation filter what they do the sample observe the light and uh, they get excited because of name suggests excited so here the sample they absorb the light and the molecule 
in the sample they get accepted now comes the fluorescence here the sample emit light as it return to the ground state after emitting it will return to the ground state then detection so the emitted light is detected and they are quantified and at last the analysis means the fluorescence intensity it is related to the concentration so this is how the working of each component take place now let us discuss one thing that, that is very important because in examination they can ask you what are the factors that affect the fluorescence so i am just writing factors that affect fluorescence so what are the factors that affect the fluorescence so the first factors um, is that the effect of structural nature so what is the first uh, um, factor so the first factor is effect of structure nature so so the nature of chemical structure of molecule in terms of their flexibility or you can say in terms of their rigidity it is is uh, um, it is one of the major influence on the fluorescence and phosphorescence signal okay so uh, this uh, can also affect uh, the fl um, uh, um, uh, fluorescence second is your uh, effect of solvent name again second is effect of solvent name okay so solvent affect the luminescent behavior of molecule basically there are three types of solvent um that uh, that is there the first is the polarity of solvent second is viscosity of solvent and the third is your heavy atom in the solvent now comes the third effect uh, or factor you can say effect of substitution okay the substitution is again uh, the factor that affects the fluorescence then comes the effect of temperature so this one is very important means in this the, the molecule they um, what they do they experiences a very larger um, collisional uh, uh, deactivation at a very high temperature and due to an increase in the movement and velocity of molecule so the lower temperature they are preferred uh, for the analysis now um, one of the factor that is effect of dissolved oxygen again means dissolved oxygen they also affect the fluorescence at a very large scale means molecule uh, which experiences a uh, intersystem crossing uh, due to the para magnetic in nature then uh, comes the effect of concentration means the fluorescence they are very directly proportional to the amount of radiation absorbed that we have discussed in the first slide so when the concentration of the fluorescent molecule increases um, in a sample solution the fluorescence intensity get reduces means they are in uh, uh, indirectly uh sorry they are just directly proportional to the amount of radiation okay so these are certain factors that you have uh, you should always keep in mind it means what are the factors is that they can as an examination one question could be there now comes the application of fluorometry so uh, as we all know that fluorometry have, have a very huge uh, application so they uh, the uh, means um, whenever you want um, uh, um, to determine the uranium's in the salt um, uh, and so that are used extensively in the field of nuclear research so fluorometry can be there so estimation of traces of boron in steel by means of complex formed with benzene estimation of calcium by fluorometry with calcium solution determination of vitamins in the food sample like meat and cereal 
fluorometry is employed to carry out both the qualitative and quantitative analysis of various aromatic compounds that is present in cigarette smoke air pollutant concentrates automobile exhaust so as you can see that it has some its application in different field of industries even in the food industry it have a very great uh, applications like in determination of different types of vitamins in the food samples like in meat and cereal they also have a um, application in environmental science also like um, they can also check uh, way, uh, analysis various type of air pollutant concentration automobiles exhaust okay of course they have a huge um, applications in um, the metal industry and in various sectors they have uh, um, their applications so applications if you talk about uh, in the organic or organic chemistry so they are used in determination of various type of uh, assay of uh, uh, assay of eth uh, thymine estimation of um, um, uh, rare earth uh, turbium uh, so they are uh, they have a huge applications again they can determine the aluminiums in the alloy then uh, they are also used uh, in uh, the investigation of chemical structures and reactions okay uh, chemical structures and reactions in the sense they are uh, helps in investigation of hydrogen bonding polymerization rate of reactions okay and uh, other rea other application also includes like human cancer diagnosis they are used to study the marine petroleum pollutant they are also used in the accurate determination of glucose okay so they have a huge uh, applications in every field okay so the, that brings to the end of the lecture i hope you have understood the lecture student if you have any doubt any query related to the lecture and if you want me to repeat anything so you can just simply leave your queries in the comment section below and if you have any queries related to any courses you want to enroll so you can visit our website that is www.itlsacademy.com this is our helpline number that is 7080833450 uh, so you can simply call on this number and get updated you can also follow ITLS Academy on different portals like uh, YouTube, uh, like uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And so you can uh, follow ITLS Academy and get updated. So again, thank you for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe our channel. You can get our app uh, from Google Play Store. So you can download ITLS Academy app from Google Play Store and um, again for any courses you can call on this number so thank you students thank you once again